Um, hey dear Taylor, good morning. How are you doing? I hope you're good. I hope you're fine. Happy new month. We're in the month of October. And um really grateful to God for a lot of things, right? It's been back-to-back work for me, preparing for quite a number of things, had a number of engagements, did a lot of traveling, met amazing new people. Um, It's been really fun. And I know that I've had this habit of saying, yeah, I'm back, um, all that. You guys will get to see me and everything. But um, I've been a little bit challenged towards that aspect, right? And uh, I'm not going to just, you know, utter words, you know, just for the sake of saying them. Um, So I apologize for just being away. I'm trying to get a lot of things together, things are just coming up you know really really fast and all but god is faithful and i will do my best to be as consistent as possible right and that's the promise i can make Uh, but today's just one of those days you know that i i found a little bit of free time and i said let me you know record an episode and the goal is to actually get to the point of consistency um it's very, very important. I believe that my consistency would have an effect on the growth of the Tyler and also its reach. It's been quite a while. Um, yes. But before I continue, right, there's one thing that I really need us to do, right? If you listen to Dear Tyler, I really need us to do this, right? Um, I have a friend of mine that does drinks. Now, for now, this is mainly for Abuja folks, right? Um, for now, this is mainly for Abuja folks. Uh, I have a friend of mine, she makes some amazing natural drinks, right? Amazing, amazing natural drinks. And I would like you to check out her page and then you would order. This is coming from me, Pingadia Taila, and you can be rest assured that I only present things that are qualitative, right? So if you check her out on Instagram, it's TKB underscore drinks, right? So TKB underscore drinks, you'd see her drinks. They're natural drinks, very, very healthy. No additives, no sugars, no nothing. So every sweetener that you taste in that drink is from a natural source. Extremely, extremely healthy. She's very healthy. Um, and yeah, you'd really, really enjoy it. So for now, it's within Abuja, right? And we're open up for orders. So please do well to order. I would still use Dear Tyler to um, advertise the the drinks and all. So if you're, please just check it out. Especially my Abuja people, right? You would you would love it like crazy. I am a testimony, right? So you check it out, right? TKB underscore drinks, and I make and I'll make sure that I um, drop like a link in my socials, right? So um, thank you for that. So today I just want to talk about you know faith and believing God. So that's why I tagged this particular episode as I believe God. And I've entered into a season of my life where a lot of my convictions have become tested, right? It's been tested to the core. It's been tested to the core. There are certain things I believe that for me, um, I used to trivialize necessarily because um, maybe there were like other options. There were other things that I could do. There were other things that I could say, or, you know, I had options, other things that I could, you know, put in place to mitigate the whole issue within that period of time. Uh, so I really didn't, you know, take it to heart, you know. But then I got into a season, I've really just stepped into a season that my faith has been tried, has been tried a lot. Um, I was talking with Koinonia worship team members, so... I think last week, right, or Monday or so, while we're praying. And I told them this. I said that your faith will always look like foolishness until God responds with your answer, right? Your faith will always look like foolishness until God responds with your answer. And people that consider your actions of faith foolish are people that probably have other options, people that, you know, 
feel um, that there are other ways around it, right? They've not, um, maybe, maybe they're in your position, right? But then they have like another source of help somewhere. And some of them are people that are not even in your condition, right? They're not in your condition. Uh, if I, I, I won't, I'll never forget while I was in Bauchi, I had this particular friend, yeah, I'll call him a friend, but very intelligent person, extremely intelligent. And um, I celebrate his diligence to work because he always, you know, took out time to read, took out time to study. He was an exceptional student and was a first class student. But there was a day we we're having a discussion and he said that he doesn't know um, how people, you know, feel, that he has never failed in his life. You know, like he has gone to school, always passed. He has never failed in his life and all. And from that moment, I now understood or I realized that he would never be able to understand someone that has had academic issues and probably failed over time, right? So when he, he would be like, you, you would usually hear them say things like, I don't know why you spend so much time in prayer asking God for academic excellence. That that's not how academic excellence comes, you know. Academic excellence comes through diligence, hard work, study, which is an absolute truth, right? Yes, it's true, right? But then again, there are other things that individuals face, right? They may be in seasons of their life that they need that... Um, extra force from the spirit on those things that they've seen that their diligence is not has not you know risen up to the standard of what they need at that time they need some other spiritual force some other spiritual arsenal to be able to push them through that season right now for one person right they would believe that um there's no point you know, doing all of these things, you're acting in foolishness. Just get back to your book, study, and, you know, engage all of these other things, right? And if you're not careful, if you're not careful, you would now allow your convictions to be dampened by other people's convictions. One of the things that I am learning is that truth matters very little if it does not become a personal truth and conviction to me. Truth matters very little. So the Bible is leading with the truth of the word of God. The Bible is leading with the truth of God's intentions, his heart plans, his desires, his ability, his possibilities, his capabilities, his willingness to do certain things. Everywhere in scripture you find it. But then my conviction is what's going to activate it in my own life. My conviction is not going to activate it in my own life. If I decide that I'm going to use the testimony of other people to determine what God can do and what God cannot do in my life, then I would not be able to build up enough faith to trust God for it. I remember when I got born again um, in Zaria, I literally believed, like everything, I believed that the Lord could heal a maimed body someone that didn't have legs. I just felt that God could do that creative miracle. And every moment of my life where I saw people and they gave me the opportunity to pray for them, I would pray for the maimed body, right? I'd pray for withered hands and I saw some level of results. I never saw new organs grow, like physical legs or stuff like that. But at that point in time, my convictions were so strong that the people thought, you know, it was uh, being over dramatic about it, but it didn't matter to me. It didn't matter to me until I started receiving the words of men above the words of God. And I started questioning God's ability. Not God's ability, but then God's willingness to do some certain things, right? Oh, why should I pray for a maimed leg when they have prosthetic legs? Which is absolutely okay. Which is absolutely okay. We thank God for medicine. And we thank God for its... Um, it's breakthrough, right? Medicine itself, it's a blessing, right? So, but the moment I started creating other options, right, other options, I started learning how to disbelieve God. Until it becomes important to you, right, you would never ever get to the point where you feel it's worth fighting for. You never get to the point where you believe that it's something that you should find a breakthrough over. Because think about it. Let me use the stuff about prosthetic legs now. To have a prosthetic leg, it's financially, you know, intensive. 
a capital intensive thing, the maintenance and all of that, not everybody has the luxury of it, not everybody has the um, the access to it, right? So what happens to those people, right? Sometimes, like you said, like I said, right, in the, the beginning of this whole episode, I said a lot of people that tend to challenge people's convictions are people that have options, right? People that have options. It could be options through knowledge. It could be options through finance, uh, financial um, strength or capacity. It could be options in many, many ways, right? And so that's, it's one thing that we really need to get to, um, to the point where we build our convictions. Scripture says, whose report would you believe, right? That was the question because there was a report coming from one side. There was a report coming from God, right? And then the declaration of the prophet is that he's going to believe the report of the Lord, right? Because every report has a claim to it, right? There is something that stands as a testimony to that claim. And so it's really about you choosing which one you want to believe. Ultimately in life, your faith is going to rest on something. It's either going to rest on God, it's going to rest on your situations, it's going to rest on the people that you feel are your support systems, it's going to rest on knowledge, it's going to rest on wisdom, it's going to rest on something must anchor your faith. Your faith must be anchored on something. So there is absolutely no one in this life that is uh, exempted from putting faith in something or someone. Right? So you would have to get to the point, Tyler, that you would make a conscious effort, right? And say, this is what I have decided to believe. And I've decided to believe God. People will consider you foolish. People will consider you being inconsiderate. People will give you reasons as to why your, your, um, why your beliefs or why your convictions are just absolutely wrong. They'll be like, why are you wasting your time? Why are you wasting your time? I watched a movie a long time ago. Um, It's a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. I'm trying to remember the name. Uh, Was it... um, Was it Overtime? Or Sudden Death? Yes, I think Sudden Death. It was like an ice hockey movie or something. Or him and his kids went to watch ice hockey and then there was like a terrorist... Um, attack in that place and I think they kidnapped his daughter or something so he told the son that no matter what happens right do not leave here no matter what happens sit down here no matter who comes over and says follow me or do this do not move and the son was there you know people came over tried to trick him out of leaving that space he refused up to the point where I think one of the the scoreboards, right, the digital scoreboards um, broke. I think Van Damme and the bagger were fighting. They fell inside or something. But there was complete chaos that people were running out of the stadium. And this boy stayed there. He stayed there. And when um, Van Damme came back, he met the boy. And the boy was like, Dad, I stayed. You told me to stay. And I stayed. And he was crying. He was shivering. He was in a state of panic. But he, he, he did something. He trusted his father till the end. That guy trusted his father till the end. And that's how our convictions are meant to be. That we can stand firm, even in the face of very compelling arguments, very compelling situations, even in the face of danger, that you know that the word of your father takes preeminence over everything that is coming in your mind. What if your father takes preeminence over everything in your mind? Like I said, that I've I've entered into a season that my beliefs and my convictions have been challenged to the point that it's crippling. And I can promise you that it hasn't been easy, right? I'm somebody that is extremely in touch with his emotions. I'm extremely in touch with my emotions. I believe it's a gift, right? Um, To be able to connect and empathize with people, right? 
I have had nights of tears. I've had nights where I would lay down and I'll just tell God that, God, this thing is so overwhelming and I want to give up, but I am trusting you through the process. I'm trusting you through every single thing. It's very, very difficult. It's extremely difficult, but I am believing you, God, until my own testimony comes out. My own testimony comes out. And, you know, in some way, right, I, I... I kind of like rehearse my testimony in my mind. I think about it like, oh, the day that I'm going to come out and share the testimony that, oh, this is what I was facing and this is what the Lord did for me, right? And everybody will be like, oh my God, Bingo, why did you do this? Why did you do this? But I was talking with, um, my friend had his birthday yesterday and then I was coming back home with some with some guys like that and you know we got talking talking about music talking about ministry and how god lifts people and i shared my own testimony with the person and when i was about dropping him off he now made mention i was like no this is a god ordained moment my god ordained moment and i remember i quickly you know took out time you know just reached out to a friend we spoke for a while and i told the person i said that i was reminded of the scripture, right, in Second Corinthians chapter, Second um, Corinthians chapter one, Second Corinthians chapter one, verse three. So I'll just read it because it's very, it's a very very powerful scripture. It says, um, so chapter one, verse three and four, Second Corinthians chapter one, verse three and four. Blessed be, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus the Messiah. He is our merciful Father and the God of all comfort, who comforts us all, who comforts us in all our suffering, so that we may be able to comfort others in all their suffering, as we ourselves are being comforted by God. And it reminded me of the season that I was in when I was having this discussion with this um, person, right, in the car. It reminded me of a season in my own life where I had the very doubts that he had, the very challenges that he had, right? And how my conversations with a friend really, really put me on the pathway to liberation and help. And I used that same advice that this friend gave me and I was able to pour it out into this person and he was encouraged, which means that there is one more soul that has been lifted, one more soul that believes that there is hope for him, that there is something in God's beautiful plan that he can participate in and he can give his all to. Right? And that's how your, your breakthrough and your miracles are, that when you win, you're not the only one that wins. You, when you're able to break through certain doors or you're able to access certain keys because of your unwavering faith, the key stays in your hand. And then be, you, that key is your permission for to access, right? your permission to access. If you have the permission to access, that means you have the permission to bring in people into that very experience that you had. Every breakthrough that you have, Tyler, is not just a breakthrough for you, but it's a breakthrough for people that you cannot see or people that you do not know at the moment. When you win, you're not winning alone. You're winning for a generation. You're winning for a generation. There was a man during a famine. The prophet came and said that by this time tomorrow, and he comes out in doubt and says, even if the windows of heaven are open, right, that this thing can never happen. And he's by, you know, it was according to him as he had spoken. According to him, um, it was done to him according to his faith, to his expressions and to his belief that he looked at God. He looked at the situation and he said that God is incapable of changing the situation around for his favor. While the lepers said that if we stay here, we will die. If we go to the camp, we'll probably die. But in this place where we are, it's not even safe, right? We are sure to die. But if we go to the other camp, maybe they'll take us in as slaves and somehow we'll be able to get food. Now their courage and their bravery, right, made God um, create a miracle out of their situation. And that miracle that they experienced, or that miracle that happened, right, became a miracle for a people that did not even engage their faith. Did not even engage their faith. It's, you know, it's, it's extremely humbling. I was sharing 
with the worship team again i said you know the woman with the issue of blood she said that if i may but touch the helm of jesus's garment i'll be made whole right and i was telling them i said if the woman on her own accord probably you know shared with friends and other people and said oh this is what i'm going to do they'll be like i ah, know that's not how things happen what do you mean by that you're being all fetish you know god doesn't do things in that manner but that's what her faith and her conviction said right that she doesn't need to be in contact with the lord right she could just be in contact with what is on him she doesn't even need to draw his attention to anything she just believes in that much and she pressed against the crowd right in that terrible state she pressed against the crowd and touched the hem of his garment and she was made whole in mark chapter 5 that's where you find that that verse but then in mark chapter 6 the ending verse it says that and they brought people out right and they laid them on the street so that even if they could touch the hem of his garment that maybe they did that they would be made whole and they said that everyone who did became whole her act of foolishness became their act of wisdom for their own testimony there are people that would make you doubt whatever convictions that you have but tyler you've got to choose to believe god i've told myself that man i'm believing god in this season of my life i am believing god as difficult as it may seem if i ever get to a point where i'm so broken i i, I don't have a problem crying before my father right he understands where i am he understands the challenge of being human right scripture says we do not have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities so i know that this god that i serve this god that i love understands the struggle of believing sometimes it's not always easy to believe but i have chosen this and i'm going to see this testimony and i know that this testimony that i am pushing for is going to be one that would set a lot of people free it's a lot of people free when i sit down and i pray concerning these issues i'm not just seeing me i'm seeing the multitude of other people that would enjoy the benefits of this breakthrough that the lord would give but you've got to choose to believe whose report would you believe the 10 spies the 12 spies went to spy on the land of canaan and when they came back 10 of them said that we cannot and then two of them said we can and a generation followed 10 and based on their belief system they lived in that reality they did not enter into the promised land a whole generation had to be wiped off and a new generation with a clean mind with an understanding of god's ability had to enter there and the reason is that if they had taken them into that land with that mindset they would have lived a life consistently in defeat So Tyler this episode right this episode is very dear to my heart what do you trust God for what do you believe God for whatever it is Tyler listen to me whatever it is Tyler believe God whose report would you believe believe God if it's for your finances and God has given you a vision and a dream concerning something believe God if it's for your business and he said that this is what is going to be established believe God if it's for your ministry believe God if it's for your family believe God if it's for your health believe God it may not be a vision but it may be a promise in scripture right and that you hold on to it you claim it and you walk with it Tyler believe God and believe God recklessly right believe God recklessly let nothing ever shift your convictions do not allow the doubts right of other people stop you from believing God do not allow the doubts of other people stop you from believing God right oh, i believe God i believe God and God is going to come through for me i believe God so greatly and God is going to come through for me um Well, yeah, so I really hope that this episode blessed you. Um, it's been a while and I hope to be able to share more often, right? But um, please remember, make sure that you check out TKB underscore drinks at, on Instagram, right? And I'll do well to share it with you. Please um, make sure the word goes out about it, right? And then also follow Dear Tyler on all our socials, right? Um, yeah, and God will bless you. Remember that I love you. I believe in you. And I'm always, always rooting for you. Bye.